right, so we'll get started here and we'll talk about busting Google admits, what works, what's just nonsense. And uh, I know you'll get some good tidbits out of today. We'll dive into uh, some simplistic stuff, but then also some things that are you can also look at on your own there too. All right, and at the end, we'll announce our winner for our uh, contest here for our monthly uh, stat tracker contest. So we'll be sending that out to our winner. I'll announce that here uh, at the end. All right, so what we'll cover today is why your clinic must be advertising on Google and what Google ads work specifically for PT clinics and some mistakes to watch out for to maximize your return. And then we'll give some examples from other practice promotions clients that were helping with this. So let's talk first about some common myths here. And the first is, you know, a special Google ads just weren't from my practice. We get that from different clinics that they may have some specialties and let's say women's health, for example, or some other uh, type of uh, uh, programs that they have in the clinic and they think that there's, that it just won't work for them, but it does. And so then the other thought is that Google ads may only be for bigger businesses, which is something we'll talk about here today. It's not just for that. Uh, some people have tried Google ads before and they didn't get any leads from it, or they didn't get the results that they thought they might get, or that people may not click on the ads uh, and the behaviors of people on Google. And some people might be getting a ton of clicks out of it. So they think, hey, I'm doing really well, but that doesn't tell the full story. So we'll get into some of that here today too. All right. So right now you got to realize that people are searching online for help with their pain or problem. The question always is, will they find you in your practice? I hope that they do. Uh, that's one thing that we try very hard to help you with is get uh, more discovered in your community. But let's look at uh, Google, so Google and why you should focus more on Google and why we put a lot of emphasis on Google. First off is because you can really improve your online discoverability with everyone around you. And it allows you to increase your ability to go direct to consumer rather than relying you know, uh, heavily on physician referrals or um, you know, other types of referrals into the clinic. In today's world, to be able to go more and more direct to consumer is really ideal. And then got to realize that too, people on Google are actively searching for help versus browsing on social media for other things. So that's why it's good to put a real emphasis on Google because it's lower hanging fruit. Uh, not to say that you shouldn't be doing stuff on social media. It's just different. And we'll talk about that in a little while. So with Google, got to realize that people are using Google more and more and more uh, over the years. Um, they were now up to over two and a half trillion searches per year on Google. So that's only going to strengthen as uh, the world gets more and more digitized. Um, and one thing to really understand too is like in behaviors of people, right? So uh, people really start looking for health information first on search engines, right? They don't go to social media uh, to, to get answers to why is my knee hurting or why is my back hurting, right? Most people are going to Google it and they start with a search engine around that, trying to get some free information, some ideas, um, and then stumble across providers or you know, go from there. One other thing that's really interesting is that more people are searching for health advice across all age groups every year. So if you look at the graph on the left, we've got our different age groups here from uh, anywhere, you know, the 16 and the categories of 65 to 74 uh, years, 75 to 85 years old. So it doesn't matter what age you are, they're all trending upwards in the amount of people that are using search engines to get health advice. And if we look at, okay, that's great in terms of searches, but what about people using advertising, you know, Google advertising, digital advertising? Well, let's just look here at the growth in the amount that's being spent in U.S. healthcare on digital advertising. So if we see back in 2017, that was just under $6 billion. And by last year, it was over $11 billion, right? So almost double the amount of digital ad spending for healthcare and pharma in this that short time span. So you can tell where the growth of this, the trajectory is gonna go. So let's talk about why uh, advertising is important. So first off, we've got SEO, right? This is search engine optimization. This is something that we work for you hard on helping you get ranked better in Google, right? And this is really like your long-term game. Um, we help work to help you rank better in the map section here. That's the local ranking part of it. And then also the organic top 10. So trying to get you into those top three spots of Google. So when someone has a search for physical therapy near me, this is great. We're helping you rank up in the maps. We're helping you rank up in those top three section there. However, if you look here on the page on the left, 
there's an awful lot of real estate still available for you to be shown on. And you're not at the very, very top, which is where Google puts the ads. And that's because they are a pay to play game, right? So that's where we have what we call search engine marketing. This is Google ads. And so you can see here, we have Google, uh, the advertising part at the top, but you can also have advertising that shows up in the uh, maps section here in the local ranking section. So you can have four or more spots on page one of Google when people are searching for, let's say, physical therapy near me. And you can imagine if you have more spots on page one of Google, how much more likely is someone uh, to click onto your uh, link, website, ad, whatever it may be, and take action, right? And that's ultimately what you're trying to do. So this is why it's so important to really think about how you should be adding ads to your marketing because it's going to help you help you have a greater impact for the people that are already searching in your community. Uh, here's another thing to consider, and this was the Google vicinity update. This occurred uh, in around December of last year and kind of uh, definitely spilled over um, into this year and will be ongoing. And uh, what we can do here is it, see is that it, it shrunk the geographic search area when it comes to SEO, right? When it comes to that organic searches. So if we look at um, the local rankings here for, uh, let's say a clinic on the left, we can see that uh, you know before this, they used to rank quite well, far away from the clinic, right? In these other sections of Chicago. But after this change, what Google really did was they shrunk how far you would rank from your location, from your business location. And so this impacted all small businesses and uh, Google went really tight on their searches. So that's why they call it the vicinity update because it's the vicinity around the clinic. So basically like a two to four mile range is, is basically where you're ranking now in the you know top one to three spots here. So you can see the impact of uh, how you know they ranked well here, but now further away from the clinic, it ranks very poorly. And it's not a factor that it's doing bad on its website or it's bad SEO. It's just that Google shrank the search criteria. So now it is hard to rank for surrounding towns and areas and pull people in that you used to be able to pull from uh, before. So this goes to show you that in today's world, we just have to attract more new patients online um, by advertising on Google. And here's the thing, sometimes people think that, you know, I'm a, I'm a smaller practice, um, you know, I can't afford Google Ads, it's not for me, but Google Ads is really for everyone. And no matter if you're a startup or a multi-location practice, uh, it's really critical to have this component in your practice. And so with Google advertising, what it, do, what it does is it allows you to reach more people on Google and really broadens your clinic's ability to rank outside the vicinity zone. Right? So you can actually target where people uh, are seeing your ads. So you can target by zip code, which is really nice. Let's say you're in an area that's very um, you know, office and work heavy and you're pulling people from suburban areas. Well, you might want to target those suburban areas. right? And that's something you can do with Google Ads, but you can't do that with organic SEO. Uh, you can also target by radius around your clinic locations. So this is nice if you're multi-location clinics because you can kind of overlap these areas. Uh, and have a compounding effect from that. Um, and there might be, again, some areas that you don't necessarily want to pull from, and that's fine. You can, you can uh, take those out. But here's the key thing, is that you can be a bit more selective in how, who you want to uh, reach with your advertising. So we've got Google ads, and we've got Facebook ads, right? And sometimes you get the question of like, well, I'm doing Facebook ads, so I don't need to do Google ads. And that's not the right train of thought. They're different, right? And so Facebook ads, if you look here, they're, they're really served to people based on their characteristics and general preferences. Facebook is all about a user's personality or behavior, right? So it's serving up ads based off people's behaviors. And sometimes what we'll find too is people are doing Facebook advertising programs. They're doing it with the, the focus on just generating um, consults or, or leads, you know, from, from that. And so what happens is you get, you might get some good uh, consult sign up, some leads, but they may not show up. They might not be very good quality type leads that are coming in. So that can be the problem there is you're investing in that. Now, not to say that you shouldn't do Facebook ads that gives you a broader range. It's more of a public relations action 
uh, and you can follow up with people after they've touched your website too. It's just different, right? And so it's something that you should be doing in addition. You should be doing Google ads because with Google ads, you're serving to people based on their keyword searches, right? Which is all about the user intent. They have an intent to find out information. They're not just casually browsing and come across some information. So a little different there in the characteristics of how someone's looking for information. With Google Ads, targeting is everything here. So there's lots of different targeting that you need to do. And, and at the end of the day, this is what helps you get more leads per dollar. And when you start to do stuff yourself, you don't necessarily take into all the uh, considerations of the targeting component because it's quite complex with that. So there's the geographic targeting where we're talking about zip codes and radiuses and all those kind of things, right? There's also the demographic component. You know, we're targeting people by age, preferences, things like that. You can actually have a lot of that data, um, you know, in a Google Ads system. And let's say, for example, that they are, uh, you know, you're one, with your programs, you're trying to target more seniors, you're trying to target more sports. So you need to make sure you have the right age ranges there. Uh, so you're not wasting your money with that and you're targeting the right people. And then also platforms. So this is where, you know, Google has a lot of things that can set it up yourself and that's great, but they also want you to spend a lot of money. And so they'll actually put you on lots and lots of different networks that they have. And that doesn't necessarily mean the right kind of network for practice, right? That might be fine if you're you know, selling a video game or something like that might have different characteristics than what you're looking for with a healthcare practice, right? So um, targeting in regards to the search, the network, the games, video ads, like where is that going to show up? Uh, one area I can see a lot of clients waste money uh, by doing it themselves is they actually don't realize that their uh, ads get served up on the um, inside video games, right? So you'll see like, uh, the ad would pop up within uh, a video game, but people are just clicking off that because they want to get back to the video game. So it's really not the right platform for, let's say, a physical therapy clinic. And again, you're going to be wasting money on that. Also, the budgeting. Um, you can under budget, you can over budget. And that's like uh, when we get into the actual click and conversion side of it. So that's also something to really examine and look at. Um, the other part of it too is it really depends on your own individual strategy for your clinic. Let's say, hey, I wanna open up another location. Well, that's gonna have a different kind of strategy and you need to make sure you have enough budget going towards that in order to accomplish your goal. So that's why it's good to work um, you know, with an expert there to, to match your goals that you wanna achieve with the right budget that you're gonna need. And then just realize too that this is where clinics sometimes um, you know, they're, they're looking at their own budget, but they don't necessarily expand their marketing budget as their own revenue increases because marketing budget is really just a percentage of what you make. So like eight, eight to 10% is, is where most healthcare practices are in their marketing budget. So if your revenue ideally doubles over two or three years, well, so should your marketing budget because it's a percentage of what you do. So you need to increase your advertising spend the more you want to expand. The thing too with Google Ads, it really allows for control here. So it gives you the ability to adapt and change as your practice marketing needs adjust too. So sometimes you need to throttle up, you need to throttle down, you need to be in a different area, you need to have a different program you're going to promote, whatever it may be there. You can really you know, tweak that uh, and faster uh, while you're do also doing it on the SEO side. But just realize that not every market is the same. Um, this can, you know, cost and performance is going to very depend on where you're living where your practice is. And so that could be very, you know, more costly in like an urban area versus different in a rural area. And you might have different language and different titles and different parameters that you're going to have depending on what part of the country you're in, as well as what like the environment is like. So with Google Ads here on the left, you can see we've got different ways you want to increase traffic, uh, pay only when someone clicks on your ads, track and measure ad performance, have control over your budget, and ultimately you want to generate a higher return on investment for what you're spending with ads. That's to say there really is no silver bullet with this. Okay, so um, the thing to realize when you're going into doing Google ads is you need to play the short and long game, right? Ads kind of equate it to the short game and it gives you uh, the ability to kind of fill the hole uh, and add to it 
uh, than just traditional SEO. So SEO is really much needed. So you can, again, command those spots on page one of Google, and then ad gets you up there faster, right? Um, and again, you can kind of tailor it to be in different uh, markets or different programs that you're advertising there too. But realize that it, you know, just doing ads by itself is not the solution to everything. It does take a multi-pronged effort. The better your website converts, the better your ads will convert, right? The bit more SEO you have, the better the ads will do. The better your ads do, the better your SEO does. So it's like this uh, you know, circle of things that work together and it's not just one thing or the other. So sometimes practice owners make the mistake of like, hey, I'm gonna try to save money here. Let me cut out my advertising and I'll just have my website. Well, then months later, they're not doing well with their new patients and they wondered why. Well, they kind of took away all these multi layers and try to just go with one thing. And just realize too, ads are just one piece of your marketing machine. So when it comes to the actual ads themselves, so let's look at some best practices here. So things that we do for clients is we really dial into, uh, you know, if they're a PT clinic, the physical therapy campaigns, and you're going to be working on different types of keywords here. So, and search phrases, of course, popular ones like physical therapy near me, physical therapy in your specific town and best physical therapy. It's great if these actually match up to uh, search phrases you have within your website too. That gives a good quality score to your ads. Uh, what's also good to do is condition specific campaigns. Now I would say putting about at least 60 to 70% of your budget towards your main categories like physical therapy, and then the other you know, 30, 40% on condition specific campaigns. So having campaigns around back pain, shoulder pain, uh, rotator cuff, knee pain, the caveat here is that with these specific condition campaigns, you don't want to have a, a lot of them because it's going to spread your budget too thin. And um, you need to have enough chances at and enough money behind each one of those in order for it to be really effective. So uh, an error could be a mistake would be that you're trying to you know, shove in lots of different conditions, lots of different ads. And then your budget spread too thin and you're not getting served up enough times for it to work properly. And then you don't see the results that you can. So you're better off just picking like two, maybe three different conditions you want to focus on, some core main ones like back pain and knee pain, for example, and, and dial those in with the keywords that go underneath each one of those categories and the different ads that go underneath those categories. So one thing you should be working on and that we work on a lot for our clients as part of the ongoing um, you know, maintenance of the ads and improving them are negative keywords. And so realistically, what has to happen is Google has to learn how and when to serve up your ads. And initially when this gets started or whenever you make a, a significant change, it takes about 30 days for Google's algorithm to relearn where and how to serve this up to get the best results for you. And it keeps going, right? It keeps learning as you go along. So sometimes you don't want to mess too much with the ads and sometimes you need to mess with the ads, right? It just really depends on how the results are coming out. But realize that it just takes constant feedback and you have to keep monitoring this. It's something that's, you know, it's a bit challenging to do if you're running your practice, right? You've got lots of stuff to do, treat patients, put out fires, handle staff, billing, you know, all these kind of things. Is this something that you really should be doing yourself, right? When it takes more feedback and understanding how the system works. And are you going to put all the time and effort into learning how that system works so that you can get the most out of it and your marketing budget? Here's some things to work on and that we work on again from a routine account management standpoint. So, you know, daily, you're checking ad status, you're checking, are the extensions working okay? That does break from time to time. So it's something to be checking on there. And how are they performing? Uh, what stands out there? So those are things to check on weekly account optimization, any kind of recommendations there, keyword audits, how are those specific keywords working, negative keyword cleaning up, that's something that has to be ongoing, and then monitoring for benchmarks. Um, again, you're you're relying on Google's algorithm to serve things up at the right time in the right place, but it's a learning machine and you have to keep giving it feedback to learn better from it. Um, some benchmarks that you should be uh, working with here if you're doing it yourself uh, and things that we work hard to 
uh, come under these benchmarks and improve upon that is uh, cost per click. It uh, should be less than $3.50 per click. Cost per conversion, we'll talk about conversions here in a second. That should definitely be less than $40. And then the click-through rate should be greater than 3.5%. And the conversion rate should be greater than 4%. So the thing with understanding Google Ads is really understanding the tracking and reporting. That can give you a lot of information to make tweaks and changes. And that's against things that are... Um, Google Ads experts are constantly working with our clients on. Uh, so conversions is really where it's at, right? That's what we're looking for here. Conversions are really the actions you want someone to take from your advertising, right? So most of the time, I'd say about 60% or more of the conversions are actually going to be phone calls. And that's a great thing. So it's coming through to your front desk. Um, they might come directly from the ad itself and call there and what's called a call extension. Like you see, you know, up this is called a call extension. Um, and these are other call outs and other extensions down here where they'll go to specialty pages on your website and people will click through to those. Then they'll most likely call or fill out a form, but more often they're calling from there. So tracking of that is really critical and that could tell you a lot about your conversions. What we do with our program too, is we have a great call tracking system. And so it brings in all the calls that are coming in, all the data, the information, and we can really see with that calls, um, where are they coming from? Are they coming from Google ads? Are they coming directly from Google, Google My Business? So you can really tell where these calls are coming in from and assign those, that data and that metrics there. And what's great with the call tracking is that we can actually through the call tracking, self-identify the person as a new returning current patient or, you know, a vendor uh, or other. Um, so, you know, press one if you're a new patient, press two if you're a current patient, press three if you're a returning patient. That way you get that data in there too. So you can actually say, yes, this was actually a new patient calling in uh, for the first time here, or they're a past patient calling back in, right? That's good to measure too. You want to be able to push those, those levers. So in Google ads, you need to know what you're looking for here. So usually in your campaigns, what you're going to see is clicks, uh, which is obviously people clicking on your ad impressions, which is basically how many times your ad is served up in front of people. And then the click through rate. So this is the percentage of how many times was it served up compared to the amount of people that clicked on it. And that gives you that click through rate there. And then your average cost per click. Right, so this is the amount of dollars that you spent to get uh, a click out of that particular word or the, of that ad, and here's your total cost. Right, this is usually over like a 30-day period, but you can make it, you know, whatever factor you want there. And then here's a biggie: what's your conversion rate? Right, and your conversion rate again is telling you, um, hey, I got 22 people convert. They, phone, they made a call, they filled out a form, they took some kind of action to uh, get in contact with us. And so these are the magic numbers here because if we're getting over 4%, that's pretty good. So you can imagine here, 16, 18, 26%, uh, we're getting a lot of action for the amount of times we're getting the ads served up there. And again, it doesn't cost us that much per actual uh, conversion, right? So let's dive into this, like how does this work? How does this make sense? And some things to kind of look at, like how we approach it, right? And this is a three month case study here we did with a clinic and they were a unique clinic because they did PT and went a general PT, but they also did a lot of women's health. And so we really helped their ads gear towards women health and pelvic rehab. Uh, that was a big keyword that uh, they ranked for. And so what happened was, um, at the beginning, they had some old ads running that they used to do before they worked with us. And they're like, let's keep running those ads too. And we'll see what happens. I know that we can do better, but let's just monitor. And that's the direction they wanted to go. So here's, here's an example. So this is the client campaign here, the blue one that says pelvic rehab, that's theirs. And then here is our, uh, pelvic health practice promotions campaign for the same category, right? And then this was just general, general orthopedic stuff. So if you compare these two here, right? So look at this, the client's account 
or, or uh, what they were doing themselves got more impressions. It was served up more, right? So on average here, we look at about 25,000. Ours was shown about 15,000 times over that three month period. Okay, so theirs is better or is it? Okay, so now let's look at what matters. Okay, clicks. All right, out of all those times that it was served up, who's got clicked on more? Well, here's our campaign, practice promotions, and there's their campaign, okay? And so we can see here that we generated 713 clicks and there's generated just slightly over 500 clicks. However, they got more impressions, all right? So that means our click-through rate was better. Now, the next step here is what was their conversions like? Right, so you can see a drastic difference here. Here is their campaign, and here is our campaign. So if you look here, our campaign was about 14% conversion rate, while theirs was probably about 2%. So we're talking about how much money is invested here. Where do you think it's better, right? We actually spent less, but got more people to call and fill out forms substantially, like six times more people actually take action from uh, the amount of clicks and impressions that, that were generated, right? So at the end of the day, it's not about how many people you can have this served up from, or even how many clicks you can have. Those are things that you monitor, but at the end of the day, how many people actually take an action, right? That's what counts. We want to have good quality leads coming through. So we were able to get a substantially better conversion rate for this campaign than the client was able to do on their own. And uh, coming back here now, this is the actual cost per conversion. So how much money did they have to spend to get one person to call in or fill out a form or do something? And so if we look at, here's the client's campaign. It cost them about $120 to get one phone call or one form fill, right? Where you look at our campaign, cost them 20 bucks or less, right? So again, you can do advertising on yourself um, and you can get results, but you're probably gonna pay a lot more than if you work with an expert who can really dial your campaigns in and get the return on investment that you should be getting with your ad spend. And that's why it's really important to look at these kind of metrics when it comes to ad. So here's the ultimate metric and it's called ROAS, return on ad spend. That's really what matters at the end of the day. I put this much money in, how many new patients did I actually get out of this? And we have these metrics in between that help us dial in the campaigns. And so we can get those phone call leads that are actual new patients ready to have a conversation with our front desk, okay? So this is a 30-day campaign for a client. You can see they generate 26 new and returning patient phone call leads specifically from those ads. And they spent $960 around, okay? And they generated those 26 new patient and returning patient leads for that. So that equals $37 per new patient or returning patient lead, which is pretty amazing, right? It's a very low cost for actually getting someone in the door. Now, again, if you don't have those other things tweaked in, this is gonna be higher, right? And so at the end of the day, it's about, hey, for the same budget that you're spending, can we get better performance for you? And yes, we can. So this is where, again, it can be really important to look at how you're doing ads. If you are doing ads and you're doing it yourself, you could be wasting money on that. Uh, this is because ads are complex and they do take constant monitoring, updating. And here's the thing, Google wants you to spend more. So they're going to give you all these types of recommendations. And if you keep agreeing to all those recommendation, recommendations that they have, then they're going to serve you up on all kinds of networks and platforms that you don't need to be on that aren't going to give you good results. And they're actually going to blow a lot of your money. So don't always do what Google recommends because, again, their effort is to get you to spend more money. And that's where, again, using expert help is really critical. It's just like, you know, I'm a PT. So uh, it kind of was frustrating to me where people like, oh, I can do PT on my own, right? I know my body. I know what I need to do. Yeah, you got a home exercise program, but you didn't go to school. You don't know the body, the anatomy, 
and the processes to get the optimum results, right? So just like that, that's what we do for Google Ads. Uh, so if you're not working with us for Google Ads, I definitely encourage you to check it out with us. We definitely make it easy. Uh, we have Google Ad at Certified Professionals. Uh, we're a Google Premier Partner. Uh, and we seamlessly tie this in with your existing practice promotions website and different systems here. So we can have that whole monitoring throughout all the uh, marketing systems that we had for you. Uh, we do all the ads, the campaigns, the call track and the reporting. We keep you on the loop of what's working there. And what you also get is the benefit of nationwide ongoing research that we're doing into what's the best performing ads, the best performing practices. And we apply that to all of our clients here. So you get that you know, not what's just working in your area, but what's working nationally too. So we have this now included in our different plans. So we have our uh, platinum program here, which is our digital services, but now our pro plan includes our Google ads in addition to those di digital services. And then we have our ultimate legacy, which is all of our digital services, plus our newsletter, patient newsletter program. Um, but our new ultimate includes all of that, plus the average uh, the Google ad program in that too. So uh, you should definitely talk to Trey about that. Uh, he can give you some more data about how those uh, new programs work. So, uh, you know, depending on your program, what you're in, if you need to talk about, hey, I want to rank better in Google, um, we need to have a conversation around, hey, how can I leverage Google ads more to get new patients in the door? You know what, I'm, I could be doing better with reactivating more past patients that's where you want to be working with patient newsletters. So you should definitely connect with Trey here. We'll be sending out his information, but you can just reach him at Trey at practice-promotions.com. And he can schedule a demo with you and uh, talk to you about your current plans and what your goals are there uh, and match what would be the right fit for you uh, with what we have. But it's a great, uh, he's got a great demo there on how we actually run the Google ad program and the results that we're getting from different clients for that. All right, so before we announce our winner here, just love to uh, get any comments or questions. Feel free to uh, use the chat here or the Q&A. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have around Google Ads. So what is the one way that you can get a conversion rate higher? Great question. Lots of different things. So there's not just one thing that gets a conversion rate higher. Uh, it could be the titles. It could be uh, the network, the platform that you're on there, the, the targeting. Um, it could be what's on the website, right? What page are you sending them to with that? Um, it could be your call extensions. It could be your other extensions there. So the, there's lots of different things that go into making that conversion rate better. So you have to dig in and look at what are the behaviors of people are, as they are interacting with your ads, and then you can tweak those nuances. So like I said before, there's no like silver bullet of what's the one thing that works here. You have to look at these different parameters, but uh, as I showed you before, those if you can look at those different, you know, what's my cost per click? What's my click-through rate? Um, what's happening on my website? What's my targeting look like? That's how you can get your conversion rate higher. All right, great. So let's announce here our winner for the monthly stat. Tracker, and uh, this is going to comprehensive physical therapy. So congratulations. Uh, you'll get a $100 Amazon gift card here sent to you. And thanks for filling out your monthly stat tracker. That's really helpful to you and to us also in seeing how many new patients and reactivated patients are coming into the practice. Then we can really analyze that to our metrics. And then we can give you a clearer picture in terms of how things are working, right? And we can work together uh, on increasing those new patients and reactivated patients so you can be more successful in your practice. So thank you very much, uh, Billy, for doing that. Um, and I want to thank you all for being on the webinar today. I hope that was very helpful to you. Got just some good ideas around Google Ads. Again, if you'd like to uh, connect and learn more, have a demo around what we do for Google Ads, uh, definitely connect with uh, Trey at practice-promotions.com and we'll be happy to help you out and answer your questions with that. All right, so thanks everybody. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.